hello, hello. <laughs> I was I was scrambling because I realized as I upload my TikTok lives to <laughs> to uh, YouTube how freaking similar the front of them looks. Now here's the here's the thing, as we like to say. Here's the deal. Much like Mike Nesmith once said on that live version of that Monkeys episode when they were on tour, I believe he was singing the song, and I think it's on the head uh, soundtrack, though I could be wrong. I'm just relying on this, not the Google, is you can't judge a book. So just because, just because I tend to show up looking very similar every day with my black t-shirt and my hoodie or, or, or a variation of that, every day is different. And that's a really cool thing. So I'm curious, what are we gonna get into today? Um, I love showing up for TikTok Lives. This is my, fir my, my number whatever in a, in a whole marathon of them I'm doing from now until May 1st, maybe even May 2nd. And I'm here for you this morning, so good morning. Um, if you don't know who I am and you're like, who is this person? I would like to introduce myself. Hello, good morning, my name is Beth. And I am a decluttering life coach, and my coaching is called Destination Decluttered. That heart right behind me on the wall there, that's the destination. Um, I have written books about road tripping that strangely and awesomely and funly enough uh, has totally revolutionized the way I think and feel and act and create coaching to help you treat your life more like a road trip and less like a commute. Now I know, good morning, Becky, and oh, right, and I typically start my TikTok lives by doing a bit of a Gen X throwback to, um, to Romper Room. Now the interesting thing is, is I think on Romper Room, Miss Jean used to say goodbye to everybody. I don't know if she did it at the beginning. I haven't researched it, but this is what I'm coming up with. So I would like to say good morning. I'd like to say good morning to, who, who do we have here? Oh, we've got Dally and Barbara. Barbara, there's my Boston accent, uh, Marie and Dana and Bob and Kimberly and Dawn and Jamili and Lindsay and Becky and Matthew and Carol and another Caroline and Dr. Rena and Pro K, Penny's Pops of Color and KB and Nicole and Darlene and Sasha and Mrs. Sharon Davis, uh, Rachel and Jules and Kathy and Rosita and Mishi and Tim and Rami. Rami Shells, uh, did you invent post-its? Uh, so good morning, everybody. Um, Cruella, I love that you mentioned that you were from Tennessee. As I mentioned, I, well, I didn't mention, I mentioned my Boston accent because I grew up in New England. I grew up in Massachusetts. I haven't lived there for the last tw almost 20 years. Even more, crap, almost 25 years. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, I live outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the, in the Philly suburbs, in the Philly suburbs. And I'm always interested where people um, are tuning in from. So if you feel like putting your state in there in the comments, feel free. Um, this is the neat thing about not just TikTok, but about social media. There we go. All right, right. K is in Western PA. Go, go. Um, I'm trying to do, I have a, we have a neighbor who's from Pittsburgh and we have some good fun friends from Pittsburgh who says they're going to do that in at and going down, to, down, no, actually down to shore. I can't remember. I got my all my mid-Atlantic um, accents mixed up. There we go. We got Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plains, right? Uh, South Carolina, I, Ohio, Myrtle Beach, Kansas, Texas, Kansas City. Okay, two hours north of Pitts, so closer to maybe um, Erie, PA, home of the Oneaters. You're kind of near uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, you and Melissa might know each other because she's, she's 40 miles north of Pittsburgh. Delco. Yo, Deb, you're from Delco. Going to the Wawa for a hoagie and some water ice? Yeah, there we go. I love this. See, Wisconsin, Mooresville, North Carolina, Wisconsin, Mississippi. Notice how we're all from different places. And, ooh, Tampa, nice weather. Sherry, North Dakota. <laughs> it's me, Deb. Yeah, I, I, I love it. Um, yeah, uh, notice how we're all from different places, and yet we're all here because, because, because clutter, as the kids might say. Um, Jersey Shore. I'm going down the Jersey Shore this weekend. We are making an impromptu trip to Frantic City. Frantic City, Indianapolis, Indiana. I will also be in Indianapolis. I just literally booked my tickets yesterday. We're going with some friends in July. I'm so excited about that. 
um, not June, but July. So, hey, everybody. So here's the interesting thing. Notice how we are from, as ELO would say, all over the world, or at least all over the states. And we have some clutter. And we get some thoughts about our clutter that make us feel a certain way about our clutter. And you know what the cool thing is, is I'm thinking because you've showed up, even just being curious, you, you kind of maybe are thinking of wanting to do something with and about your clutter. I got you. That's why I show up here on TikTok. Um, I'm here to help you with your clutter because boy, howdy, as they would say in Cream Magazine. Um, I grew up in a cluttered home uh, with people who are, I mean, trust me, I don't judge. I, I, I said the other day, I think it was on a TikTok live or maybe even to, oh, you know what it was? It was on the Destination Decluttered email members only Zoom call we did on Tuesday. Um, just real quick, if you're interested in joining that mailing list, destinationdecluttered.com slash join. We do a monthly free group Zoom kind of coaching thing. And I said with complete sincerity, like if I was judgy about people with clutter, I'd be in the wrong business. I willingly and specifically got into helping people with clutter because I know how it is. Okay, hey, Miss Julie, this is interesting. I saw your your Zoom attempts to get in. I got, I got the notifications of them. This is the reason is that the Zoom was actually on Tuesday. Yeah, and today's, th yeah, today's Thursday. So that's why, okay. And here, Julie, Julie is saying, and Wendy Rose is saying, I missed the Zoom because dinner went late, so kids' bedtime was late. Do not worry about it. It's just a bonus thing. We will do, I will do one in May. I will do one in June. I will do one in July. And so on, and so on, and so on. Can you tell him a Gen Xer who listens to the radio too much and watched too much television or maybe just the right amount of television and just the right amount of listening to the radio? So um, I'm not going to post. I don't I don't record or post the, the Zooms, uh, mainly because honestly, it's a privacy issue. I want people to feel comfortable kind of sharing what they're struggling with and not feel like it needs to be blasted all over the place. So do not worry about it. Um, the one thing I will say, though, too, it won't be posted on YouTube. Uh, but real quick, um, let me just do a, a quick just info thing. It's not a commercial because I'm not selling it. But um, the Destination Declutter email mailing list is the cool place to go to for all the good stuff. You get first dibs on everything. I do free things like the, um, the Zoom that I just had on Tuesday. And sometimes when I get the urge to or I get the motivation or the inspiration for the celebration of meditational urge, I will do a workshop. Typically, my workshops are going to be surrounding kind of how to take those ideas in your head, put them down on paper, and not just write a list. Everybody knows how to write a list, but create a daily roadmap, create a weekly roadmap that gets you not only to where you want to go to, but feels more like a road trip and less like a, a torturous commute, okay? I'm doing one of those um, free email-only uh, workshops this coming Sunday. Now, the interesting thing is, you may have heard me say I'm going down to Atlantic City um, this weekend, but I will do the workshop from our hotel room in Atlantic City. Uh, if you're interested in that, hop on the Destination Decluttered email mailing list. If you're not, no big deal. Uh, it's just a free thing. Uh, I think it helps. I do it all the time. I mean, literally, how do you think I got so rich, as my husband likes to joke? Uh, it's because I use this, <laughs> literally, a, a crappy 50-cent notebook. This was actually one we found when my husband was going through his clutter. He found this blank notebook and I said, oh, I can use that because I, I write on it. I scribble. I cross things out. I tear the pages out. I start afresh. Um, bring a notebook or a workbook. And also, if you have any colored pencils, you only need like maybe three colors. Three colors. If you have, I use, um, I, I like to write in black ink and use these. Do not go buy anything, okay? But um, yeah. All I hear is Radio Gaga. There we go. Kendra Irish, nice to see you. Boston sports girl, go Sox. I love it. Travel in turquoise. I love traveling. Love turquoise. Okay. Anyhow, enough of me kind of babbling on because I had a sip of tea. I am here for you. Um, destination decluttered. Decluttering life coaching. I know you know how to do a lot of stuff declutter-wise. I get that. I want to champion and encourage you to do what you know how to do and feel good about it. 
because typically when people share their wins, like if you have a if you have a decluttering win, if you want to share it in the in the comments to give like maybe the new folks an idea of what that is, um, and uh, what I want to um, offer to you is, I love that you know what to do, yay! But I also want to reassure you, there is absolutely nothing wrong with you or the process of just not knowing what to do at a certain point, okay? Um, we don't know how to do everything. This to me um, was the kind of the game changer when I was writing my books about road tripping. I have been pretty much what I would call retro road mapping, retro road tripping since probably as soon, honestly, like my, my, my relationship with clutter and my relationship with road tripping are pretty much kind of parallel, parallel, parallel. <laughs> and um, learning how to treat my life more like a road trip and less like a commute totally changed it. But this makes me think back to when I didn't know how to drive a car. We were not born learning, knowing how to drive. We observe people do it for decades. We're there in the back seat in our little car seats. Then we're maybe in the front seat, shotgun, passenger seat, you observe it, you're a participant, uh, you see people doing it on TV, you maybe read some books, you see some videos. All of that stuff still doesn't teach you it. And what do you do? You get somebody who knows how to, who knows how to drive and is a good teacher to teach you how to drive a car. And that's so funny, I just got a notification to check into my, um, my, my place in Atlantic City, but we're not going there till Monday. I mean, Saturday, interesting, I gotta check that. Um, I help you like a driver's ed teacher. I teach you a process. I'm here to share with you my system, my process, all the stuff I have in my kind of decluttering toolkit, kind of in the, in the trunk of the car. I've got it out of the trunk, I lay it out here, and you tell me where you're stuck, where you don't know what to do with things, and I'll be like, here, I can teach you. Here's a tool, here's a hammer. I know you don't use hammers in cars. Here's a here's a tire iron. Here's a I don't know. Here's a air gauge for you. See, I don't know the tools of the car. I have to get better at that one. Um, so what are you stuck with? Okay. All right, Cheyenne, Frank, you want to have to go to work? I will follow you later. Need your help? Perfect. Sign on, or if you're still if you're still here, just follow my follow my um, uh, my TikTok page here because I'm doing a destination decluttered. E, uh, what do you call it? Um, I'm doing a, I can't even speak this morning, doing a TikTok live every day from now for like the next week. And my my videos are also, my the, the video recordings of my TikTok lives are recorded and I repost them on Destination Decluttered on YouTube so you can you can see what they're all about, okay? Um, Vives, I'm not in New Jersey, but I'm close. I'm in Eastern PA. Uh, Becky says, just took two minutes yesterday. Where is it? Where's my two minutes? My two minute timer. Love it. Just took two minutes yesterday and went through old genealogy notes and recycled or organized. Rock on, Becky. I literally, not even kidding, was was um, thinking about my genealogy. I'm the genealogist in our family too because I'm the collector and I'm the organized person. Um, so I know that feeling. So congratulations on that. So celebrate the moments of your life <laughs> in the... General Mills, International Coffees version of things. Celebrate what you do, celebrate what you do well, and be cool with what you just don't know how to do yet. Yet, yet is such a cool word. I remember saying this once to this guy at a diner. I was at this vintage diner in Connecticut, and no, maybe it was a friend of mine. I can't remember, no, because I, I did a picture of the guy. He had this inf inspirational tattoo right here. I think it's my friend Jesse from space. I'll have to ask him. Um, the word yet. I haven't done it. I haven't done it. Has a certain feeling when you say it. How about this? I haven't done it yet. Yet is fun. Okay. So the stuff you don't know how to do, where are you stuck with your clutter? Put it in the comments. When you do that, you're sharing, you are getting in touch with where you're stuck. That kind of the roadblock. If you were in a car and you were driving and you stopped at a certain place because you didn't know what to do, or you felt weird, you felt overwhelmed, you felt discouraged, you felt tired, exhausted, you felt a thing, you thought a thing, and you stopped, that's okay. When you stop, I'm kind of like AAA. I'm kind of like, so funny, all the hats I think I wear as a coach. 
I feel like I am a driver's ed teacher. I feel because I'm in the co-pilot seat with you, teaching you how to do these things. I feel like I'm a, a you know, um, what do you call it? Like a travel agent. I'm helping you plan the road trip. I know how to make a map to help you. We make a map together to get you to where you want to go, not where I want to go. You tell me the destination and I can help you get there. I'm kind of like a, a travel agent. Um, but also, I'm like, you know, the person who's also helping you just get in touch with where you're at. No judgment. Um, but I can only help you unless you share with me what's what's going on. Other than that, I'll just be talking to myself here for the next 45 minutes. So I am here for you. Absolutely no pressure to participate. You can just listen. Um, but if you have a clutter thing that you'd like some professional help with for free, you're not one of my paying clients yet, <laughs> um, pop it in the comments. What I'll do is I will read it out loud. When I read it out loud, it's mainly for either two, two audiences. It's for the people who are not looking at the screen, which is totally fine because a lot of people who know that I do these TikTok lives hear me and then they're like, oh, Beth's on doing a Destination Declutter TikTok Live. I can put that on and listen to it. I don't need to look at the screen. So I will go and do some decluttering of the surface type. So if you wanna use this time kind of, kind of multitask, listening to me while you go do some very surface cleaning um, decluttering is something that doesn't require thought go right ahead i will read the comments um and then reply to them i also do that because when these TikTok live um recordings are uploaded to youtube these comments that you see kind of going by you or at least i see them i don't know kind of what it looks like on your side um Th those don't carry over. It's just, strangely enough, it's just me and my big old face talking and saying, hey, how can I help you? <laughs> I kid, it's rarely that. It's more like this. Okay, now I love this. Kia, it says, it has been a joy. This is why I do what I do, for the joy. It has been a joy to be able to see the top of my microwave. I have ignored it. I had ignored it until our talk. Yeah. Now notice, you dealt with something, you did something. You can do something about your clutter. I get like this and I need to go like this. You can do something about your clutter. Don't think you're stuck. You're just stuck temporarily. You can do something about it and if you don't know what to do, I am here to help you, okay? Kay and I had a talk and suddenly she is, or they are, I, I, I'm referring to she and I apologize if I got it wrong. Um, you had ignored it until our talk. With our talk, and really the talking is words. But words, much like many songs I think I've riffed on before, can make you, the words in your head and the words in your ears can make you feel a certain way. I was, you know, I had ignored it. I didn't feel like I could do it. I was overwhelmed. Then I heard some different words, heard them, felt them, now able to see the microwave because you did something about it so rock on there's the thing okay fiery a angel is saying collecting things i like and not having space for it okay i'm a collector this is a me a, a small a small example of the club the, the collecting when you go to the tiktok or the destination decluttered youtube channel you will see that when i do like a weekend TikTok live, usually they're pop-ups. I don't often do them on the weekends, but when I do, I don't like to be in my office. I like to be around the house. So you will see I'm a collector. So you, me, collector. Here's something I wanna offer for you, for you and for everybody. Think about the stuff in your house that you like. Think about the stuff that you don't like. And then think about the stuff that you love. I love this. And notice when you are a collector, you've got the stuff you like, but then you've got the stuff you love, hopefully. Pay attention to how your things make you feel. Notice where my hands started moving, I wasn't doing like the robot, is your items in your home make you feel a certain feeling. Now, I like to keep this simple because I think of this as either when you're in the car or it reminds me of this game we used to play running up when we were on the Trobs up, uh, uh, um, anybody's front yard or backyard we would play red light green light you ever play this where somebody stands there and you run and you stop red light green light red light yellow light green light you know and whoever got to the person and hit them first like won the game i want you to think of the way your stuff makes you feel as three just three simple colors like a traffic signal 
you've got the stuff you love, the stuff you love, you look at it, you feel love. Oh my God, I love that. I would never, it's not even a question. I want to keep that. It's a green light right here. Green means go. You're being pulled forward. It's like a magnet. You love it. Pay attention to the stuff you love. That's not clutter. Pay attention to the stuff you don't like. Now notice where my hand is going. It's kind of going down here below my belly, kind of where, as I like to say, where your poop shoot is physically because your body does this all the time. This is the, this is the red light. No, I don't want it. Let's get rid of it. Your body gets rid of the stuff it doesn't want on a daily basis. Basically, it declutters, okay? So think of the things in your home where you're like, nope, don't want it. That's also a pretty clean feeling, right? Like, nope, don't want it. It goes in the trash. It goes in the recycles. I'm, I'm donating it somewhere. I'm getting it out. That is kind of clutter. That's the easy clutter. The clutter that tends to jam people up is the, I don't love you, but I like you. I kind of like you. It's the yellow light. It's the yellow light that's neither yes or no. It's kind of maybe. And this is where my brain goes to, because I have a musical brain. Should I stay or should I go? By the class, should I stay or should I go now? You've got that tension of the yellow light, you, like you would if you were driving your car. If you were driving your car down a road and you were going at a regular speed and you had a yellow light, you would probably do one of two things. You would have to make a decision You'd have to make a decision because there's tension. Do I speed up and try to get through the yellow before it turns red? Or, you know, or do I slow down and make sure I stop for the red? So notice the yellow light. There's a little tension there. That's the tension that clutter gives you. And how you resolve that tension is checking in with your head and your heart. So your hands know what to do with those things. Okay? So fiery angel and everybody, pay attention to what you like Pay attention to what you don't like, but pay attention to what you love. And those are three categories. Categorizing, putting things in groups of like items together, as we used to say in visual merchandising, can help you make decisions. You'll better know what you have and where they fall on your internal barometer of whether you want it or not. Okay? Okay? I gotta, I gotta stop that. It annoys me. <laughs> Uh, Wendy Rose is saying, my biggest issue is schoolwork clutter, hands-on activities and board games. We homeschool. Okay. What I'm going to guess is a couple of things. I am thinking, and this is all, notice how the coaching is only, only kind of effective when we're not having a convo. This is why when I coach, we do it on Zoom. One-on-one -on -one is so much more effective, but I will do my best with the info you give me. So I am thinking that the schoolwork clutter has to do with two things. It has to do with one of probably the habit of, do you tidy up after school, the school, you know, after you, the school bell is rung and you're out of school, do you tidy that stuff up? And when you tidy it up, do you have a home for all that stuff that doesn't make your house look cluttery? Think about it. Having a home for your items is super important to have it not look cluttered, but also getting in the habit of putting your things away after you're done with them is it. So have it home and habits. So oh, I got to write that one down. I love me an alliteration. Home and habits. Okay. There we go. Mishi says, I listen to you while I'm getting ready for work. And then when I return home, I declutter. Yep. Power of positivity and breaking down the task. You know it. I like to call it chunking down. Breaking down, chunking down. As I like to say, oh, it's on my, I am using this mug today. Slow down, breathe down, chunk down, quiet down, break down, write down, all the downs. Okay. There we go. But what if your husband won't follow? Our garage is full, okay? Funky Puddle, fun name. Um, what if you want to declutter? I have an organized come to my house, help so much. Do that if it works for you. Having somebody there with you can help. That's not what I offer, but I know a lot of people do that because I just went to a um, conference for the National Association of Organizing Professionals, professional organizers. Um, and having somebody help you can help. Sometimes people come to your house, other times they show up on Zoom like me and I coach you. What I would say is, you are feeling motivated for whatever reason. You have a reason that's getting you wanting to declutter. A, re a reason that's meaningful enough to you to get you to do take your time to do it. I am thinking your husband won't follow because he doesn't have a reason. To him it is not as important as it is, is to you. This is where the destination comes in. This is where 
If you're like, I want to go to there, you're going to do the things to get to there. I want to go to there because you're excited about going to the destination because you know if you declutter, the declutter is the process, but it's leading to something better than you have now. Now, if you're not excited about where you're going and you don't see if, if you're, you know, there's many reasons, but if you're not motivated to do it, you're not going to do it. Um, how about this? Funky puddle. Focus on the things you can change. Focus on the things you can change regarding your mindset, what you do with your clutter, and maybe lead by example. You know, maybe your mindset shifts also includes, you know, not nagging your husband about it. Now, trust me, I have a husband and I will confess, I might nag. I try to motivate, but it may sound naggy. You know, I'm a coach, but I'm also an imperfect human on this planet. Um, do your best, but work on you first. Don't use other people as a, 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 an excuse. Turn the lens to you and say, okay, if he's not doing it, what's going to make me feel better about what I'm doing about the clutter that I have direct involvement in? Don't try, trust me, I've done this before. And it just ca causes, again, that yellow, that tension of this is, oh my gosh, you guys, this is where a song has come through my head. Whoosh. This is where it comes up was uh, She Blinded Me With Science, Thomas Dolby. She's tidied up and I can't find anything. Yeah, that's me. I miss Sakamoto and I'm going to my husband's, you know, um, science lab, his, stu his studio, because I'm like, oh, this place, I'll just tidy it up a little bit. She's tidied up and I can't find anything. Yeah, it's because I didn't put things where he would put them. I've done that before. And luckily I have a very patient husband because if he came in here and did that to me, I would probably be pissed. But he knows that I just, and I just try to, un he's got like the, the, receipts for his when he's traveling and he's playing gigs he's got tr receipts and he crumbles them up and he puts them on the thing and it's like he's like a little kid with his pockets he's got a frog here and some jacks and a and a slingshot and a couple of bucks here and a receipt and a gum wrapper and a and a decoder ring and he dumps it all out there and all i want to do is be like okay let's just neaten this up let's tidy it up but we we get along okay all right so work on yourself and when you work on yourself, you, you will be better prepared to help them. Okay. Uh, Sunflower is saying, we moved from Michigan to Texas. Okay. We gave up every everything away so early to clean up. So easy, I think you mean, to clean up the house now. Fewer things. Oh, my gosh, you guys. This is why I do what I do. I'm freaking lazy. I don't want to spend a lot for that muffler. And I don't want to spend a lot of time organizing and cleaning my house. Now that I am decluttered, it takes like no time to do that crappy stuff. So now I have so much more time to do the things I want to do. So just think about one of the reasons might may be the summer's coming, the spring is here. Do you want to spend your weekends always cleaning out the garage, cleaning out the basement, cleaning out the attic, cleaning out, cleaning out? No, let's let's ha let's ha let's get it done. But let's have some fun while we're doing it. These next 10 weeks, for example. Well, maybe not 10 weeks because I'm going up to Mass to help my mom with her clutter. But after that, like the first week of May, if you started coaching then, you've got May, you've got June, by, by Jan July 4th. How's this? Destination July 4th. How do you want your home to look? On July 4th. Do you want to, are you cool with it looking cluttery like it is? Cool. No, no, that's awesome. But if you want to change it, I suggest we work together. I'm a one-on-one -on -one coach. I do paid coaching. The one-on-one -on -one is the paid stuff. It's the only thing I charge for. Um, and if that seems interesting to you, I do a 10-week package with 10 sessions, 10 and 10, two and two. What was that? Chuck Woolery on the Love Connection? We'll be back in two and two. 10 weeks, 10 sessions. Each session is one hour a week for 10 weeks on Zoom. You and me, just you and me, nobody else. And all we do is focus on you, what your destination is. Where do you want to go? The things you do well, we celebrate. We say, yes, keep that up. But the things you are struggling with and just stuck with, I teach you. I create, I bring my toolkit and I kind of clone it. And I say, here, have this, use this. Let me show you how to use this. Practice it. Practice it here with me. Practice it while I'm away. Kind of like, again, I always think of... Um, learning how to drive. 
uh, uh, what do you call it, driver's ed. And then the next week, hey, did that work? Yeah, it kind of did until it didn't. Okay, cool, let's get curious and see what didn't work. And then practice and practice and show up and support and accountability and encouragement and problem solving and fun and camaraderie and, and, and you know, somebody there for you in your corner. That's what coaching is. And the cool thing is, is your house will look and feel different. You will feel different when your house starts to look different. If that sounds interesting to you, go to my website, destinationdeclutter.com. Uh, you can join the mailing list slash join because then you get first dibs on my consultations. And actually, I'm going to do this real quick. I'm just going to look here to see if I have any consultations available because sometimes I only book it out about two weeks. So if you look, okay, so I got some on, oh, tomorrow and Monday and Tuesday. And then Wednesday, May 1st. And then I'm, I've, 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 May, you'll see on the calendar, is empty because I haven't done some. I will, st I will start up the consultations again on Monday, May 7th. But I'm going up to Mass to help my mom with her clutter um, beginning of May. So if you're interested, if some of those, um, s those consultations work for you, it's a free consultation. Basically what it is is you and I get on Zoom for about 45 minutes to an hour to see if what I offer is going to help you. If it does, we talk about coaching. If it doesn't, I, with love, help you problem solve what could help you. It's no obligation. It's so no pressure. I freaking hate pressure. Fear, tech, mongering, all that kind of bullshit. I don't do it. Okay. Um, so that's what that's about. Or sign up for the mailing list, destination declutter. Okay. Okay. All right, so I am going to do my best to slowly scroll, but sometimes TikTok goes zoop all the way to the bottom and I have to backtrack, okay? So um, Kristen is saying, I don't know if it was you, but I saw a video that said, stop asking if something sparks joy. Ask if you want the resp responsibility of managing that item. That's a nice way of looking at it. I didn't realize for years that that whole sparks joy thing was Marie Kondo. I hadn't hep been hepped to her thing. But what I want to say is, here's my acronym for that, is do you think it's... I, I use the acronym BUS because I like to think of road trip and, and things like that. Is it? Do I think it's beautiful? Do I think it's useful? Or do I think it's sentimental? If it falls under one of those categories, I might want to keep it. Okay? And also, yeah, do you want to take care of it? So like having a pet. If you bring a pet into your life, you're going to need to take care of it. Everything you bring into your life, you're going to have to take care of. You're going to need to wash it. You're going to need to use it. You're going to need to repair it. You're going to need to dust it. You're going to need to find a home for it. All of those things, the more you have, the more you're responsible for. And I don't know about you guys, but at my age, I want to be responsible for nothing but myself and my own happiness. Okay, so Kristen, really good way of thinking about it. Thank you for sharing. Okay, there we go. Somebody's got their old craft supply collection. Thank you, Meg. Okay, so notice you're calling, saying my old craft supply collection. Did you used to do crafts? Awesome for past you. Do you do those crafts anymore? If you don't, that's okay. You can have chapters of your life where you do certain things and they bring you joy. And those chapters can be over and you can be like, yeah, I don't want to do that anymore. There's nothing wrong with that. We evolve as humans. Okay? I love this one. Funky Puddle says, I ask myself if my item could be, if it sparks joy in someone else. And oh my gosh, the answer could be yes, most definitely. So much of the stuff that I have collected has been something that somebody else donated to a thrift store. So, oh Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Cat Mama says her motivation was mice. Took two days to empty the garage except for the lawn tools. Yep. Lisa Z, I'm going to try to do this with two fingers. We'll see if it works. Lisa Z says, good morning from Illinois. Nice to see you. I almost said Illinois. That would have been embarrassing. Um, all right. Eva is combining homes tomorrow with your fiance. He's OCD and worried about our home being cluttered. Okay. This, this right here. What I want you to do is I want you to start out on the right feet. Okay, you guys are combining households. You're going to be kind of like the Brady Bunch, a little bit. Oh my God, I just did a, a two for it. It was going to be the Brady Bunch and the monkeys, a little bit me, a little bit you, too. Okay, I want you to think about what you're bringing in and what he's bringing in or they are bringing in. You said he, okay. Um, and this is a time for you to get in touch with do you need to bring all the stuff? If he's OCD and afraid of the clutter, it's probably a quantity of clutter. A certain level of stuff kind of gets them feeling not so good. How much stuff do you need to bring in with you? Could you use this combining and moving as an opportunity to offload, to shed some of the stuff you just don't want anymore? Okay. All right, here I go. I'm going to, oh, there it goes. Yep, I tried. I was honestly getting a cramp trying to hold, hold it there. 
Uh, all right, now I'm going to kind of work backwards. Please don't take it personally if I missed your question because sometimes um, TikTok hides them. Sometimes I miss them when the thing scrolls, okay? A um, couple of things. Twin Twin 2024 is asking me what state I'm in. I'm in PA. Uh, Mishi is motivation is declutter for the summer destination. Summer of entertaining. Summer. Oh, who was it who I was talking to? <gasps> A number of my clients this week, my one-on-one -on -one clients have said how it felt so different to easily be able to open up their doors and invite people in and it was no big deal where previously because of the clutter they had kept the door shut and not invited people over that is one of the benefits of decluttering is feeling good about having people over the summer of entertaining if you're entertaining people at your house where are they going to go what do you want it to look like okay i love it tamara is saying i'm on destination declutter fourth of july there you go there you go that's like 10 weeks from now you know, even if you do the decluttering on your own, if you show up, whether you're coaching with me or not, and you start small and um, you do a little bit at a time, your home will look and feel and function differently than it does now at the end of April. Now, I will say this, when you get a one-on-one -on -one coach, it's kind of like when you're at the gym, you can go and do your thing by yourself. Totally cool. Not absolutely nothing wrong with that. But man, if you paid for a personal trainer at the gym, and you said you met with them once a week and then you 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 committed to them that you would also when you're not meeting with them you would show up and do things in between your sessions can you imagine how different your body would look and feel in those 10 weeks just something to think about all right i'm backing up backing up i love it me she is leaving sticky notes with my words of wisdom glad they're helping i love it okay so here's an interesting thing l is saying um my mom passed away. Okay, I'm so sorry. She left behind clothes and paper clutter. I've donated some, but dad wants to keep certain items. That's okay, but I may have given them away. Okay, how do I handle clutter from those who've passed on? All right, let me help you with that, because I can. I, the way I coach is I think of clutter in kind of three levels, almost like you're in a pool. You get the shallow end, you get the medium end, you get the deep end, or, you know, kind of deep, you go deep, okay? Surface, stored, sentimental. Sentimental stuff is the deep stuff. That is the stuff that tells you stories. It's an item, you know, it's just a thing. At the end of the day, it's just a thing. But at that thing, you have, you have combined it with a story. Oh, that's not just a mug I bought at TJ Maxx. It's a mug that my mother bought me at TJ Maxx and she brought it to me and every time she came over, we had coffee or something like that. That's the stuff that's going to take the longest to go through. And I don't mean necessarily the longest, but you're going to spend more energy in it and more time and see smaller results. You can go around and you know, you can in a hot minute, all the stuff that you don't really care about, put away, do that, do this stuff, trash, 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 recycle, recycle, you know, easy peasy stuff. That can look good. That's kind of like the big wins. Those are like when I say like when you're carving a turkey, you can carve off like some lop off some stuff really quickly and you're like, man, I'm making progress. But once those big pieces are down, oh no, this is what I was doing the other day. Here, work with me on this one. I'm changing my metaphor. <laughs> I want to say this because I'm from New England and I love lobster. This is like when you are, um, when you're eating a lobster. At the beginning, you've got some easy places you know to go to to get a lot of meat. You've got the tail and you've got the, cra the, the claws, right? Easy peasy, look at this, this is great, look at all this meat. But then you've got the next layer that if you wanna get the meat out of those places, you're gonna to need to work a little bit harder in the same amount of time that it might've taken you to crack a claw and get a nice claw meat and dip it in the butter. So good. You might be picking the little legs and you get a little bit of meat, but you're doing it the right way because you're getting it. So have patience with yourself while you're going through the mom stuff. But just remember, both you and your dad, is you, will, you both will absolutely never forget your mother. You may remember the stories. You may want to save a certain thing because it reminds you of them, her. But you don't need the, what is the quantity, the number of items that you want and your dad wants to remind yourself of your mom. You may start at the very beginning with a lot of them. 
and as time goes by, you may feel better kind of going in a circle, doing another pass and whittling it down. But what I want to say to everybody, especially with the sentimental clutter and especially about sentimental clutter of people that are no longer in your life, dead, basically, or just people who, you know, you want to save the clutter and remember them, is this is a journey and this is a process and there is no timeline on this. This is no deadline. There is no speed limit that you're supposed to be doing. Do it at a speed limit. Drive at a speed limit that feels comfortable to you while you're going through this. And it may be slower than when you're trying to, you know, go through, you know, random stuff that comes in the mail. But take care of yourself during that process, okay? Um, I hope that helps. All right, what else do we have? <laughs> My husband just leaves stuff everywhere, retired chemist. Funny, nails, drills, bits, supplements, he didn't take mail. Um, interesting thing, you bring up the chemist, because I would think chemists would be nice and organized about things because I want to find it. Um, I will say this too. I, this is not my expertise and this is one of the reasons I go into that, that I, I got my coaching certification, but I also have a consultation with potential clients just to make sure we're a good fit is if somebody is continually leaving something, you know, all over the place, it could have something to do with the way their brain is wired. And I say that both because I work with ADHD people and I know the kind of, I know that environment, but it also might possibly be a, um, sign of maybe an like you know a neurological thing so i just kind of throw that in there that is totally not my expertise so i don't want to get into it because i don't want to misrepresent but just ask your husband maybe why he does that it may just totally be a distracted habit because he's trying to you know figure out all these things up here and so the stuff the everyday mundane things is like what no i'm trying to solve all these things it could be just a habit you know, or it could be, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize I did that and I forgot and I'm, or I'm putting it out there because I'm afraid I'm not going to remember. Okay. So hope that helps. <laughs> who has ADHD? In my world, who doesn't have ADHD? When people talk on here on TikTok about neurotypical people, I'm like, hmm, I've heard of them. I've heard of them. I think I've met them. They seem kind of like, they're like regular folk, you know, they probably wear beige, you know, I'm not going to brain shame anybody. I love my brain. I have, we just found out yesterday, actually, in a, um, in a, what do you call it, a uh, text thread with my mother and one of my sisters that we have ADHD on both sides of our family, my dad's side and my mom's side. So there you go. So I am so used to that life, you know, but I love it. What I love, and this is what I endeavor to endeavor, listen to me, fancy words. I endeavor to, I hope that my coaching, I go into coaching to show you systems and processes to help you work with your brain and how your brain is wired as opposed to fighting against it. Square pegs, one size does not fit all. Square, square pegs, okay? Um, there are people out there who say, follow this rigid system, fit your round hole into my square peg thing. And if it doesn't, that's your fault that you didn't do it. I say, fuck them. I say, let's find a way that works with your strengths. Let's roll with that. But let's discover where, no judgment, just curiosity, where you tend to get tripped up, where you hit potholes, where you are all or nothing, where you are hyper-focused or scrolling on TikTok for hours. You know, where do you not show up the way that you know that if you did show up, your life would look and feel better? And let's play around with some possible strategies that you could play around with to get your life looking and feeling and functioning the way you want it to. You know? Okay, yeah, I, yeah, Jeremy made. I have ADHD. Did well coping until I went through menopause. Mammopause is the change. It is a lot of a lot of places where a lot of us are finding that our brains are working differently. Yeah, and it's gotten so bad. Squirrel. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I was thinking, where do I start? Where would clothes be a good place to start? Marsha, 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 74. I want to encourage you. If you do you think I'm gonna I'm gonna lovingly ask you, do you think clothing would be a good place to start? If so, then start there. It really doesn't matter. Honestly, there is no one perfect route to get from point A to point B. What I want to offer to you is start where it feels easy to start. 
The starting is the hardest part often. It doesn't matter where you start as long as you start. And typically, if, I, I, if you think about it, I want you to think of everybody. Think about the things that you start to do with no, 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 not a lot of drama. You just do it. That's because your, your nervous system hasn't been activated. And that's because part of you is like, oh, this is easy. This is no big deal. I'll just do this. And you do it. What we work on in coaching and what I hope you're thinking of is noticing where a certain task or item wakes up your nervous system to be like, whoa, I don't know. That looks like too much. I'm overwhelmed. You may do it the wrong way. We pay attention to this. We don't ignore it and try to fight through it and say, suck it up, buttercup. We say, okay, heart, nervous system, what's up here? I don't know. That just seems like a lot. I'm afraid I'm going to do it wrong. There's no way you can do this wrong. Working at a pace that works for you, checking in with what you want to keep and what you don't is the best way to maintain progress, keep on chugging along a little bit at a time, and reduce the regret you may have because you're doing it differently than the way you did it before. Yeah, Susan Porter right there. I'm high-fiving you. I've learned to work with my ADHD and wouldn't give it up for anything now. I am right there with you because I freaking love how my brain works. Look at me. I mean, I show up and I'm, I'm every other word is either a pop culture reference from the 60s, 70s, 80s and beyond or like from TV or music. That's how my brain talks to me. I think it's funny. I like to share it because you may be like, I remember that commercial and we have a connection because we're probably Gen Xers. Even if you don't get my pop culture references, that's OK, because what I'm offering you maybe speaks to a certain part of your brain that says, hey, <laughs> this isn't so bad. I've been listening to this. This Beth from Destination Decluttered for almost 45 minutes right now. And, and I've learned something. And this is kind of not bad and kind of fun. Who is it? Robla from Mars? This is good and not yucky. You know? I get some deep cuts. Um, Funky Puddle. What about kids' toys? They refuse to let items go. I bet you have items that you refuse to let go. I bet you anything your kids have a story in their head that makes them feel like they want to cling on to it. Notice that about yourself and walk yourself through that process. Do you have something that you refuse to let go of? What's the story that keeps you hanging on to it? Keep me hanging on. Is that the Supremes? Set me free, why don't you, babe? No, it's somebody else. If somebody knows it, put it in the um, comments, would you? Keep me hanging on. I'm going to write that one down. I'm creating like a, I've decided yesterday, I decided I'm going to do like a, um, Destination Decluttered Spotify playlist. Keep me hanging on. Okay. It is the Supremes. Oh, actually, Boston Spurs goes Bananarama. Bananarama and the Fun Boy 3 did it. Uh, Kim Wilde was Kids in America, but she might have covered it as well. Kylie Minogue. I love this. Okay. I love this. Everybody knows the different versions. My, my musical people. I love it. And what I want to offer is something to, um, and, and I'm sorry, I'm, I get into the thing and I forget names, but about the kids' perspective, you know, is um, uh, you would not want somebody to come in and take care, to, to, to get rid of your stuff without consulting you. That would harbor, to me, that would create trust issues because all of a sudden it's gone. You're trying to do a good thing. I say at the level that they are able to participate, Engage with them and just start to introduce the concept of decluttering, no matter how young your kids are, in the notion of, because you're struggling, if we're all struggling with clutter right now, think of how we would be thinking about clutter if when we were little, we were told, hey, you know what? There are going to be items in your life that you use for a while, and then you might outgrow them, you may get bored with them, they may not do it for you anymore. You don't need to hang on to that. It's okay to let it go. And especially with toys, the wonderful thing is is sometimes we feel like we are losing something when we give it away. That's what we think. I'm going to lose something. What I want you to think of is what you're going to gain when you give something away is you're going to gain a good feeling. As somebody set up thread, I choose to believe that the stuff that I no longer want is going to spark joy with somebody else. So if you, if you said to your kids, hey, you know what? We're not getting rid of all of your toys. We're gonna, we're just gonna, the ones that you don't, you're not really playing with anymore. How about we put together um, a, to a, a bag and we donate these where kids who don't have any toys can play with them. 
Now, unless your kid is the bad seed, I would like to think kids are so heart filled that your kid may be like, oh wow, there are other kids there who don't have toys. I have so many toys. I will share my toys. I will share my toys with a kid I don't even know because I'm gonna put it in a bag to give it away. Involve them in the process. Involve your husband in the process. Somebody up thread was like struggling. Hey, hon, do you want this? Decision making, okay? Um, it's, a, it's a life skill, really. At the core of it, decluttering is a life skill. And it is a life skill based on decision making. Hearing something in your head, feeling it in your heart, doing a thing with your hands that basically comes out of what do I want to happen here? What do I want? I want, insert destination here, I want a house that is easy to maintain, that looks good, that feels good, that smells nice. I want more free time to do what I want to do. I want paying attention to what you want. Now, this may be unfamiliar if you're used to being taking care of other people for your entire life. We as women in every society are not meant to be. We're told we're selfish if we pay attention to what we want. No, we're supposed to be selfless. Well, then you don't even know who yourself is. I say become self, self-full, self-ish, no, self-esque. Get in touch with yourself right now, whatever age you are. And this is your destination. Ask yourself what, and again, I'm a life coach, so I tend to flip into, I tend to shift, you know, kind of shift gears from like decluttering into the, the bigger yet 100% still the same thing of decluttering. So let's, let's chunk it down. So you're not like, what do I want my life to be? I don't know. You may have some ideas. When they come up, write them down. When those thoughts and feelings come up, you write them down. And what do you want your house, your home to look like? The more important question to me is, but that's because I'm a coach, is how do you want to feel when you're in your home? How do you want to feel when you walk into your home after being away for a while? Listen to what comes up and write it down. Okay? This is you defining your destination. And then how do you want it to function? Pretty easy. You just want it to function easier. The quality, the quantity, the amount of things you have, where they live getting in the habits, that's functionality, that's important. But the most important question to me anyway, because I'm not just a decluttering coach, I'm a decluttering life coach, life coach Dottie, okay, is how do you want to feel? Quick tip, if you're not feeling good, write down those ways you're not feeling good. What are the opposites? What's the flip side? As David Jones once said to Marsha Brady, what's the opposite of what, what would you rather feel instead of what you're feeling now? When that comes up, Write it down, okay? You've then just decided, you've defined your destination. And then we say, okay, awesome. You're right here. That's where you want to go to. Let's road trip this M or F -er. okay? What can you do today? What is something you can do today that's going to get your life feeling more like that destination? And then you put it on your calendar or you just do it and you say, hey, that felt pretty good. When it feels pretty good, you're going to be more likely to lather, rinse, repeat the next day and the next day and the next day, Okay? Okay, uh, Catherine, books. I have many and don't want to let go. In case I need them, it's a thought in your head. I might need that someday. But let me ask you this. You got a library near you? You got a library near you? You have the internet. You could probably re read it online. I just want to offer. Now, I come from a book family. I have two huge bookcases in our living room. And I got a suitcase. That, oh, you can't see the suitcase over here. Actually, here. See, see this little suitcase right here? I keep books in there. Um, it, they're not shoved in there. They're a specific set of books. They're like my coaching books because I don't want to see them all the time because they're they're not pretty. But I know where they are in case I need them. And I do because those are reference books for my for my my work. But there are different ways to find information. If you give away a book and you want to get an information, could you find it somewhere else? Could you get the book out of the library? Could you find the information online? Could you borrow the book from somebody? Notice that some of us, and again, we Gen Xers and anybody who is of a certain age, we have lived through the paper-only world and developed habits based on that. Back in the day, if you wanted info, you needed to own the book. Now here's a crazy thing for me. When I was writing my book about my books about uh, road tripping, I would be needing to look up 
I would be wanting to know like the manufacturer and year of manufacturer of a certain vintage diner in New Jersey or Pennsylvania. I know I have books out there, diners of Pennsylvania, diners of New Jersey, all that stuff. The books are right out there. <laughs> what did I do? I'm here at my desk. Hello, Google. Literally, I'd be looking, I'd be control effing, you know, and saying, okay, it's okay. The Frasers and O'Mahony from 1938. I would find it online as opposed to walking over there. Before the internet, I had to go to my book. Now things are different. Catch up your habits of thinking and doing. And that might change how you think about the quantity and quality of the items you have in your house. Okay. All right. Strong Soul Silver Sister. I go wait like five minutes, then I jump into a day of coaching and consultations. Strong Silver Soul Sister says, I've gotten rid of so many books that I can borrow from the library. Yeah, me too. And I still have, I mean, I still have two bookcases full of stuff because here's the other thing too. I don't want my house to look like I like totally empty. I like how my books look. They tell a story. The books that I have tell a story about who I am. But the interesting thing is every year that passes, every month that passes, those bookcases are kind of just like static. I occasionally will bring things out. Like I still will look at them. I've got these wonderful coffee table books about architecture and the tiki world and photographs and all sorts of cool stuff. Don't get me wrong, but I am not adding to my bookcases. Very, very infrequently will I add a book and it's for a specific reason. I do not collect books with the rapidity that I did back in the day because my life has changed. I can access information differently and I'm not trying to impress somebody by saying, look at all the books I have. Aren't I a cool person? Right? Yeah. I now only keep specialty books. Yeah. And those are the kind of books that you're like, no, I want to keep these. And notice that when I said earlier about the three, the traffic signal in your torso here, torso traffic signal, green light, red light, yellow light, there may be a few yellows in there, but I have gone through my books and kind of culled out the ones that no longer, you know, even at the library, they do that. They will, they will pull out books that just aren't relevant anymore. It just are taking up space. They're not relevant to who I am now. That's what decluttering is, is checking in with yourself and saying, here I am today, 2024 me. This is the age I am. That's where I was. I got to here, this little point right here that I'm pointing at, it's like a pin point in a map. On the Jersey Turnpike, when you pull over to get a snack or go to the bathroom, you will inevitably see one of those big maps that says you are here. And you see all the roads that got to that one pin and you see all the roads that lead out from there. But right now you are here. I feel like I'm gonna do some like dancerella stuff. You are here. You got here a certain way. Now you say, okay, here I am. Where do I wanna go? Ideally, you wanna go towards your destination, a life that lights you up. If you're aiming for that, there are certain things you do to get there. I suggest if you have clutter, let's start with the clutter because you learn a process of thinking and feeling and acting and you practice that and it is a repeatable process that works in so many other areas of your life. It's like one of those goofy Ronco things but actually works that says it does a million things in once like it slices, it dices, it julienne fries. That's what my coaching kind of does because we teach you the concepts and the process and all that kind of fun stuff, the toolkit. We create your toolkit that works 100% with clutter. But once you get it, you'll realize you can use it in other areas of your life to get not just your home looking and feeling like you want, but your life too. Okay. Um, ah, hey, Lisa being Lisa. Hey, I'm Beth being Beth. Um, I'm not in New Jersey, but I drive on the Jersey Turnpike a lot because I live in Eastern PA and I drive, I drive. And here's the funny thing with me, this is, this is the, the humor is not lost on me. I was so afraid to learn how to drive when I was the, the scaredy catest teen you've ever met. I was brought up to be afraid. I am so glad I got over that and I learned how to drive because now it's something I do all the time. So I'm on the Jersey, um, the, I'm on the New Jersey Turnpike a lot. I will actually be on the Atlantic City Expressway on Saturday because we're going down to AC. Um, but what I want to offer to you too, just Lisa being clear, would you, if you'd like, if you would not mind having me as your life coach, that can happen. The cool thing is 
I don't have to be in New Jersey to help you. I coach people only on Zoom. So I have clients, literally, I'm looking at a map of the US here, little smiley space stickers. I have clients from coast to coast. And it's just so easy. And I like to make things easy, okay? So um, I hope that helped. I hope this last hour of just noticing the difference when you've got the voice of encouragement and possibility and trust and love and problem solving and good vibes, how much hearing that in your ears and changes how you feel in your heart and your nervous system. Because when you think better, you feel better. And when you feel better, you do better. Okay? Now, I'm signing off, but real quick. DestinationDecluttered.com slash join. Destination Decluttered, work with me. Um, if you want me to be your coach, I do paid coaching. As I said, I, do, I have a 10-session package. It's all I offer. Um, we can get on a Zoom um, on a consultation and talk about that. The other thing, too, is, oh, getting on the Destination Decluttered email mailing list this Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern, and it will be recorded and available just to the people on the mailing list. I am doing a free workshop about creating a daily roadmap and a weekly roadmap that gets to your thing. It's going to be on Zoom. It's only for the people on the mailing list. So if that sounds intriguing for you, both if you can make it live or if you can't make it live, the recording will be available for 30 days. DestinationDeclutter.com slash join. Hop on that. The last one and the probably most easiest is if you haven't followed me here on TikTok, follow me here on TikTok, okay? You guys all rock. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. And I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, oh, same bat time, same bat channel. Diddly-loo, na 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 batman 8 a.m. Eastern tomorrow, right here, you, me, let's hop in a car and hit the road, okay? See you guys. Bye. I'm like, bye. I always hit this button wrong. Bye. There we go. There we go. <laughs> bye.